Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss topics relating to the Chicago child pornography trial in, in Chicago, as well as the federal Brooklyn appeal. So everything is moving in the courtroom. There's something I want to share with you today that was just um, documented as of a few hours ago. And it's saying that Desperate R. Kelly offered $1 million for return of video. Chicago AP. A former merchandising agent for R. Kelly testified Tuesday that the singer offered him $1 million to find a VHS tape featuring Kelly as prosecutors sought to persuade jurors that Kelly was desperate to record, recover the missing recording. Knowing it could land him in legal peril if it fell into the hands of law enforcement. Based in part on that recording, which prosecutors say shows the R&B star abusing a 14-year-old girl, Kelly faces charges that include production of child pornography. He is also accused of fixing his 2008 state child pornography trial by threatening witnesses and endeavoring to conceal video evidence. Charles Freeman testified Tuesday that Kelly reached out to him in 2001 to ask him to hunt down the recording. Freeman, a 52-year-old from Kansas City, also explained how he pressured Kelly and his associates for years to pay him the full $1 million after Freeman found and returned the tape. Freeman told jurors he did not know the contents of the video until after he retrieved it from a home in Atlanta in 2001 and then slipped it into a VHS player at a friend's home later that day. I observed Robert Kelly with the young lady having intercourse, he said. When a prosecutor asked Freeman who testified Tuesday under an immunity agreement, why it took him nearly two decades to turn the recording over to the police, that and other recordings of child pornography tied to Kelly, Freeman said, because the police wasn't going to pay me a million dollars. Kelly, 55, is already serving a 30-year sentence, we already know, imposed by the federal judge in New York in June for his 2021 convictions of racketeering and sex trafficking charges. If convicted in Chicago, he sees years added to that sentence. So we're not going to go all the way back to 2008, but I do want to give you another kind of brief understanding of how others are looking at this now that it's new and it's just coming out. So let's listen to this audio. They had from way back when in the original. We're, we're talking about two decades mm -hmm. of a different story. And uh, regardless of, you know, uh, R. Kelly's background and all that we know about him and what he's been convicted of now, it is not a slam dunk that their presentation will be believed by a jury. Uh, there's been two decades where they've received benefit, and even after this alleged, you know, fear for their safety, that seems to have gone a long time ago, and they continued in this fashion. So uh, there's a lot of questions there about uh, this family and, and, and what their intentions are and what actually happened. There could be some liability for them for having lied this amount of time. I mean, there's obviously statute of limitations on perjury. So they could have been uh, charged. Uh, sure, but potentially they could have been charged. They clearly are, are saying that what they said before, uh, I think under oath in some cases, because of the grand jury testimony given 20 years ago, was a lie. Mm -hmm. And that can't go unnoticed. What they said before, uh, I think under oath in some cases, because of the grand jury testimony given 20 years ago, was a lie. Mm -hmm. And that can't go unnoticed in terms of whether or not they should be believed now. So in terms of whether or not they should be believed now. So they could still face charges? I'm, I'm not sure. It would depend on the scheme under which they were charged. Okay. One would probably, as a knee-jerk say, probably not. Mm -hmm. But who knows? And, you know, prosecutors can be very creative sometimes. Because, again, they were successful almost 20 years ago uh, in that case. Often with videos, you know, you can't tell somebody what they're seeing. They make their own decision based on what they see and based on the other information that they have that accumulates. Could Kelly get off? Could Prosecutor Bonjean get him off? Well, I like to believe that uh, <laughs> it might be possible. Yeah. 
All right. So that's what I wanted you guys to hear. So what are your thoughts on that? The fact that, you know, this has been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. What are your thoughts? So I feel that to me, um, this is getting a little deeper than what was expected and anticipated. I thought that there was going to be a person who was going to be looking at this tape and finding the forensic evidence that it may not be Robert on the tape. But now with the fact that you're going to, uh, you know, ask someone to re return the tape and it's a million dollars you're willing to pay, you know, that puts up a question in my mind. But again, I'm not going to judge you, Robert. It is what it is. And again, this is decades ago. Yes, it is wrong. You you will have to pay if you're found guilty on those um, child pornography videos. You're going to have to pay for that. And I don't know if that's five or 10 years. I don't know. My point today in bringing this information to you is to share what's going on in the courtroom and also to empower us to keep going, you know, because there's a lot happening here. So I did a journal entry for Robert. And basically I wanted to let you know, Robert, that this is a trying time for you again. And we all get it. We understand it. Nine times out of 10, none of us would be able to go through it. That's why this hasn't been our journey. This hasn't been our situation. But I do want you to understand that there is in the shaman tradition, a concept called the dancer of frustration. Now, at times, according to the shaman dream oracle. So we're going to go to the oracle. Thank you, John Matthews and William Kingham. The dancer of frustration says that at times the universe itself seems determined that we should fail and the mountains of wasted energy spent in the attempt to break through the wall of frustration can drain us for longer than we realize. We need only to look at this powerful artwork to see that frustration is no new thing. So the dancer of frustration, Robert, may stand in your way, but also encourages you to look beyond the obvious and find a new path that may lead you to greater joys and richer rewards than the original path in which we sought to take. Um, again, I'm gonna read that again. Frustration may stand in our way, but also encourages us to look beyond the obvious and find a new path that may lead us to greater joys and richer rewards than the original path we sought out to take. The moment we can visualize that new path is the moment we can bring into our vision a new forward moment. So in the interpretation, I was given this Oracle deck maybe about 10 years ago. And when I go to the shamanic oracle, it is to interpret what is going on. And the, the, and the fact that this thing is taking a severe shift and it looks as though Robert is, you're going through more of a more intense trying time that, you know, how are you going to be able to maintain the fact that they have this on you, this video, and, you know, people are reporting that, you know, hey, you were going to pay them this, you were going to pay them that, you know, all this is going to come together for the good of what is to be brought out. And karma is going to determine exactly based upon the way we see ourselves as victims, as perpetrators, as guilty or innocent. So I want you to understand that in this interpretation, you're going to deal with some opposition. These things are going to come, but they're coming to make you greater. The weakened resolve, a lot of energy is surrounding you, both good and bad. So in this weakness resolving itself, it's coming to bring the truth to the light, period, and, and manifest it. OK, no one is going to look at the situation as a hopelessness.
because hopelessness is also interpreted from the dancer of frustration. And it's basically telling you that, yeah, there are going to be some frustrating times and it's going to bring a lack in a a area that feels hopeless. But even though your paths may be blocked, you may have inhibitions of 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 what you see for your future, but know that you can strengthen yourself from this point. Through it all, it's based upon, Robert, how you feel truthfully about what has happened in your own past. We were not there. We were not there in the intimate areas of your life. So we can't judge you, nor can we determine without your knowledge of what went on. These people, they're speaking their truth. You may have another truth. So this is also about determining and finding your way. And you may become angry. You may be passive. You may desire to diminish or to strengthen yourself. So allowing this to release from your mindset will allow you to go further into greater prosperity beyond the area or energy of frustration. So I want to leave this with you. And it is a quote by the dancer of frustration. I am the dancer of frustration. I delight in placing obstacles in your path, but I can also show you that there are other paths to walk. What will you do when I appear? Either you will push against me to try and break my hold, or you will walk with me until the strength of my grip gradually begins to lessen. So while I may seem a negative force in your journey, I teach you to look for better ways to advance and how best to strengthen your resolve. So that is from the Dancer of Frustration. This was written by the Truth Seekers Guide using the Shaman's Dream Oracle by John Matthews and Will Kingham. And the copyright to this is 1998 no 2010 sorry so basically robert i want you to hold on to the fact that this is a new walk this is a new beginning this is a new process to your life we as kelly nation supporters are going to be there to allow you to recognize that even though you're you're dancing with the dancer of frustration continue to allow yourself to breathe continue to allow yourself to push or push with or not really even push, but hold on to what you need to hold on to until it's time to let it go. And even a dancer of frustration will eventually allow you to let go when it sees that you are walking your path with more confidence, with more abundant vibration. And when you see that, Robert, yourself, all of these things that are coming forward will be less important. It's even less important to me myself personally, because 2008 is too far away to even have even gotten what is known as a consequence to deal with. You know, it's so out of sync. It's out of sync, Robert. And so continue to feel hopeful. Know that when your paths are blocked, it's building your strength. So with that, Kelly Nation, I want to let you know, too, that the dancer of frustration can be in all of our lives. We are dealing with the dancer in our own personal issues. While we are also watching Robert, you know, many of us can look at examples and experiences and we can truly say, hey, this happened to them. And I've learned like we talked about yesterday, you know, on the journal entry, learning from the lesson, you know, learning the lesson. Um, and not letting anything move forward until we have taken that chance to really, really study the lesson that is involving whatever we have to go through. So we're dealing with the dancer of frustrations too. And when the dancer comes, he or she or it, that energy is going to show us how best we can move through whatever circumstances we are facing in our lives. And this is why I like the shaman um, oracle because it gives us the real knowledge and the experience of what many of us already embrace, what we go through. 
Many can say, yeah, I'm dealing with frustration, but you don't know that there's a dancer to it. Dance with it, you know, evolve with it, move with it. You know, just like we dance to R. Kelly's music, let's dance with the energy of frustration because it is there that we are going to grow, maneuver, and move beyond to find ourselves walking on yet another path. And if anyone is familiar with the oracles or the tarot, we know that the number one, um, the number one card in the deck of 78 cards is the fool. And the fool is walking with his little backpack and, you know, he's just walking with his head held high, getting ready to jump off a cliff. Don't even know the cliff is there. But that's the beauty about being naive and not knowing. And, and as you see, and as you grow, we begin to recognize that there's a lot of things that went on in our lives that we just didn't even recognize. So I believe that that's what Robert is going through right now. And I'm here to tell you, Robert, you know, to hold your head up high. There is going to be a lot of people that are going to leave, that are going to forsake, that are going to not have anything to want to do with um, this situation just because the things are looking the way that they're looking. But again, I'm not here to judge you, Robert. I am here to be that support until the federal Brooklyn trial is over and then move beyond that to wherever we're going to go on this journey together. But I'm just here to let you know, Kelly Nation, please send a shout out to him. Let him know. Let Robert know what you're feeling. If you're feeling that this is something that is a surprise to you. Was it something that, you know, he could have <laughs> fixed? You know, was it something that he maybe could have fixed and made it, you know, uh, more difficult to where it is right now? Um, or is this something that you still believe that is part of, his journey that he is just to learn from. Okay, before we open up to the content area where you guys can, you know, speak your truth, speak your emotions, speak your feelings out in this live so that when people review it, it is in the moment. You know, I want to let you listen to this other um, Chicago team by CBS updated yesterday. I will, I did not get a chance to record this. I want to do this um, for our Kelly Appeal TV. Prosecutors continue to make case that Singer tried to cover up incriminating sex tapes. So we're going to listen to that. So here we go. The witness took the stand today in day seven of the R. Kelly federal trial here in Chicago. We heard from the man who says he paid, was paid by Kelly and his team to recover sex tapes featuring Kelly and an underage girl. CBS 2's Tara Moline is joining us with those details. And Tara, some disturbing information in court today. Jim and Erica, disturbing, and we want to warn all of you about that. The entire testimony today revolving around child pornography tapes and payoffs. The man testifying, Charles Freeman, was granted an immunity deal by the government to go on the record. He not only knew about the nature of the tapes he was paid to retrieve and recover, but made copies of them himself to be sure he'd be paid. And he kept those copies for years. Charles Freeman testified he started working with R. Kelly in the 90s doing merchandising for Kelly's concert tours. He said the two became friends. A relationship that changed when he says Kelly called him in 2001, telling him he wanted him to recover some tapes. Ultimately, Freeman said he verbally negotiated a million dollar payout in exchange for the original tape, but only $140,000 in a written contract. Freeman says within days he traveled to Atlanta to an address provided by Kelly's team with two men. Testifying a young lady came to the door. He told her he was there to recover the expletive tapes you stole from Robert Kelly. She put her hands up and pointed him in the right direction. He left with three tapes. Only one was a tape involving Kelly. He then went to a Walmart and purchased a VCR recorder and blank tapes, making copies because he didn't trust Kelly's team to pay him. 
Freeman testified observing in the tape he recovered and copied Kelly having sex with a young girl, urinating on her and putting lotion on her face. He said you can hear both Kelly and the girl refer to her body parts as 14 years old. He never called the police. Prosecutors asked why. At one point, he said, quote, because the police wasn't going to pay me one million dollars. In 2019, Freeman turned the copies over to his attorney after an attorney reached him about holding child porn for Robert Kelly. And that's what led to his involvement in this trial. Now, Freeman's demands for all of the money owed and after the 2008 trial where Kelly was acquitted. We expect cross-examination to start tomorrow morning. Defense attorneys will question Freeman in the testimony we heard today, and it could get heated. In their opening statements, they called him a con man and an extortionist. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Tara Molina, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Tara. Now, I wanted to just put that out there because I feel that that is something that we should know. Um, I did read over it, but I wanted you, I ran into the true CBS uh, reporting of it. And Tara is doing a wonderful job reporting what's going on in the courtroom, um, CBS. And uh, thank you so much. So we're going to be doing an analytical, you know, analysis of CBS and what they're seeing in the courtroom. Um, Basically, What are your thoughts about Mr. Freeman? Do you feel that Mr. Freeman should be granted immunity when he knew that child pornography was taking place in these videos and he was granted that freedom to be able to speak and not have any type of consequence to his behavior regarding, you know, how he was really an affiliate? to the whole scheme of it all. Yeah, it may have been after the situation, but if the relationship lasted for longer than all those years with Rashonda Lanfair, quote, Jane and Susan and the father, Brandon or Bernadette, whatever his name is, how can we say that Mr. Freeman is not accountable for his actions just because he has received immunity? So let's talk about that in the comment box below and leave some of your thoughts that are specific to that statement in and of itself, because I really and truly feel that he should not be granted immunity. And there's a lot more involved in his relationship if he is granted immunity from the federal government just to receive that information. They could have gotten that information from him Um I guess, involuntarily, you know, through a search warrant, um, they didn't have to give him immunity for that because he was an accomplice. He was an accomplice to that um, child pornography situation, the whole ring of what, quote, he was involved in. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to let you know. That was what was grant, what was done in the um, courtroom on Tuesday which was yesterday. So today is Wednesday, August the 24th. We're reporting this right now. I I do want to just let everyone know that, you know, we are not to judge Robert. We're not his jury. And no matter what we feel, no matter what, you know, transpires, he still could possibly be get granted an acquittal because there's still not enough evidence, even with all this other stuff coming out. How would you feel if he was granted the acquittal and never said anything about him not being the um, person in the tape? I mean, again, we have, I've never seen the tape. The jury is going to have to make that decision. And when they do, I really would have to watch that. I want to watch that more than anything, just the jury's decision. And why, and you know, even if some would come out and literally tell why they chose to, you know, decide the way that they did. Maybe somebody will write a book. Maybe one of the jurors will, you know, be on, you know, for um, an interview. But no matter what, I just pray that all things work for the good and the benefit of the justice in this situation. And as we see, if this is something that was done by Robert, 
Whatever is done in the dark will eventually come to the light in all of our lives. Every single one of us will have this day that we will have to face our reality of the things that we hide within. So we need to be aware of that and realize that it's just not Robert that's going through this because he's a superstar. It's everyone. I've had my day in court as well. And all my guilt and all my innocence was written in the book of my life. And we all have that book of life that we have to, you know, focus with. And so just stay strong. Just try your best to do what's the next right thing. And just because someone has money does not mean that they're, that money is good money. So please be aware of that. Please be cognizant and mindful of the fact that sometimes when you're paid off, it does come back and, or it'll haunt you and you'll start to see it manifest in your life all that time until it comes out. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. I will see you tomorrow. Um, with a journal entry and what's going on, you know, a little synopsis. I'm not doing a whole dissertation of what is taking place in the courtroom. So please don't expect that here. Also, um, I thank all my Kelly Nation supporters. I do want to go back to this video since we do have a little bit of time. I want to go to those who were very um, active in yesterday's comments. Mariah Ito, I pray from Mr. Kelly that the devil get off of his back and that these young women get the help and support that they need. Anne is saying, Robert, I'm praying for you that God keeps you and blesses you while you're in the belly of the beast. I'm crying. This is hard to see and help to Figure out the lies on you. God is not through with the people who lied. Keep focused and remember the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the strength of your life. Whom shall you be afraid of when wicked comes to eat your flesh? They will stumble and fall. God got you are. I'm so sad. And don't be sad. This is a time to rejoice because the power that you know within your higher being that you just spoke of in this comment, God has him. So be rejoiceful. You know, it was the hardest thing for me to rejoice and be grateful for the loss of my son. And, and you know, then when I talk to people about it, the very thing that I say is that he was not mentally connected to life as he was prior to because of the traumatic events that has occurred in his life. However, with that being said, you know, he is in a better place. He is where we all got to go. So I know it's a better place than where we are here. So please be mindful of that. And Anthony, the defense lawyers who was hired to represent Robert, look for the easy way out. That is to plea his case. Now it's a hot mess, but can be undone. Back to the beginning, a print out of all cases and it, and to take it over from there. Overturn them, writ of mandamus. Yes, let's see what that is. I'm going to go here. What is a writ of mandamus? Mandamus is a judicial remedy in the form of an order from a court to any government subordinate court corporation or public authority to do some specific act which that body is obliged under law to do and which is in the nature of public duty and in certain cases one of a statutory duty hmm so it's an order from a court and to an inferior court so it's kind of like the second circuit ordering the government official to properly fulfill their official duties or correct in an abuse of discretion. So that would possibly be those attorneys who abandoned him. So I get it. I get that. Um, here. Hey, Frankie and Johnny Cla Claudette, <laughs> keep praying. Keep praying, my friends. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Yes, we have a lot to be grateful for, a great deal. So um, here, I want to send a shout out to 1971 Lady T. 
Yes, she's praying mightily for Robert and other talented black people. Thank you. Alma, I don't really know exactly what I did. I read psychology books about single parent mothers raising of a young man. So basically, uh, she says that um, growing up, Alma, she taught her son to respect women from a young boy, even though she, you know, looks at Rob's plight. Um, let me see. Her son is 46, has no criminal record and never have been locked up. And that's a blessing, Alma. When you can say that, you've done a tremendous job. And so she says, and when I asked her, well, what did you do? Give us some advice on parenting of how you did it. She says she don't really know exactly what she did. She just read a lot of psychology books about single parent motherhood, raising a young man. And that's wonderful. Gloria, um, I don't believe it's him on the tape. Neither do I. I, I have a serious problem with that. You know, um, I don't believe that it's him as well, but it could be wishful thinking. Um, it would have to take him now to tell me specifically that it wasn't him on the tape. Mental alchemist. Hey, now you did a great job yesterday. Thank you for giving your input. You very valuable information. And yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful. And I'm glad you're here with us. And all the other, um, let me see, Gloria, thank you for being here with us. And let me see, Ray Johnson, thank you for being here. Timothy Flowers, what's up, my friend? And let me see. So, yeah. So what I do is at the end of the podcast, I give you a 10 minute window where I keep the chat open on the premiere where you can type anything in there that you want to say that you feel should be valued, any parent uh, parenting skills that you've used, any studies that you're using, like the, sh the shaman um, study or Buddhist study. What do, what would you offer Rob as an alternative to believing in the fact that he's going to come out victoriously? What would be some of your, you know, um, suggestions to him. So we're going to start, stop this now, but we can still type in the chat for 10 minutes. I'm going to add another 10 minutes to the already existing 30 minute video. I do apologize that I ran over time, but I'm grateful to you and thank you all for being here. Thank everyone, even those in the background that come and check on us here at the channel to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's a very grateful and appreciative time right now. We all have to stick together right now because this is a societal thing. This is a societal balance of our culture. And we need to, if we are one who always says, I'm down for my people, I'm down for my culture. Well, let's face these hard hidden facts and see how we can build from that. Thank you so much. And as always, keep it 100. And we will see you next time. I'm starting the time now. So you'll have 10 minutes in the chat to say whatever you would like to say to end this segment. God bless and we'll see you tomorrow.